Hi, everyone. Thanks for being here at this virtual conference. We are going to present you our researches around ICS systems. So in this talk, you will see several vulnerabilities and how to exploit them. And finally, to make this presentation more concrete and more attractive, you will also see some demonstration with the funny music. So let's go. Who are we? I'm Nicolas Delay, and I've been a vulnerability researcher since 2010. I currently work at Airbus Cybersecurity, and in my job, I enjoy looking for vulnerabilities targeting both the Windows OS and whatever application working on. Here is also my workmate, Flavian Dola. He has been a vulnerability researcher since 2009. He specializes in embedded systems such as IoT, ICS, onboard components, and so on. Here is the expected agenda. First, we will present you the context and we will give you an overview of the attack scenario we have considered. In such a scenario, we are going to chain five vulnerabilities that we have previously found by ourselves to gain full control of a PLC from an IT access. We will see later that we achieve that by especially targeting the engineering station. Finally, we will give you some key takeaways and we have a short Q&A session if time allows. So companies which own an ICS are many critical sectors like energy, water, and so on. Such infrastructure dealing with OT are mainly made up of SCADA, PSC, DCS, and so on. For a long time, security wasn't taken into account because such infrastructures wasn't intended to be connected to other networks. And as you probably know, people like working remotely and systems are more and more connected together for many reasons. And unfortunately, OT infrastructure rely on many software and many hardware components leading to a large attack surface. And one of the major risks is the ability to compromise OT networks from an IT access. So our objective is to compromise PLCs from the IT network by targeting the engineering station. You can see the station at the middle in these uh, pictures. And why? Because this station can be used as a bridge or a kind of gateway to reach the OT network from an IT network. Even if recommendation advocates not to connect such a station both on IT and OT network, in the real life, unfortunately, you can see that. However, you can also imagine that the station is first connected to the IT network to, to do some stuff and then disconnecting from this network to be connected to the OT network in order to to do what this station is intended to do. For example, loading or updating programs to a PLC. So what we need first is to find a remote code execution to access this relevant target from an IT access. Then we have to find a local privilege escalation to gain full control of this target. It's always better to make exactly what you want on such a station. And finally, you have to find a way to, to communicate with the PLC from this station in order to inject a new payload. So now I let Flavian speak about how to access this engineering station. So hi everybody, so here we want to take control of the engineering station and in the Schneider world this software is called Control Expert. In the past it was known as Unity Pro. Uh, this software can do many things like configure PLC or design automation program in various languages like uh, ladder, graph set, instruction list and so on. There is another interesting feature of Control Expert which is the simulated PLC. The simulated PLC is used when a software developer wants to test his automation program before deploying it on a real PLC. 
So in order to do that, the simulated PLC implements the same protocol and the same functionality than a real one, without the hardware part, of course. So at the right of this slide, you can see the, the classical way to use the simulated PLC. First, the software developer designs his automation program using ladder language, for example. Then he compiles his, his automation program. Uh, after he deploys it on the simulated PLC using Control Expert. And to achieve that, Control Expert sends the automation program using a TCP connection on the Modbus port, which is 502. Then uh, we make a run request on the simulated PLC, and finally the automation program is executed periodically. So each feature is quite interesting from an attacker point of view because it can give him the possibility to execute something on the engineering station. And the good news is that the simulated PLC is listened on all the network interfaces on the 502 TCP port. So if an attacker has a network access to the simulated PLC, then he can upload his own program and he can try to escape some sandboxes mechanisms, if there are any, to take control of the engineering station. So at first, let's see a closer look to the deployed program format. So by doing some reverse engineering tasks in the control expert program, we see that the library codeengine.dll is in charge of compile, of compile uh, the automation program. Um, codeengine.dll is developed using C++ languages. So by looking to the VF table references, we can see that Control Expert can compile programs for three architectures, which are ARM, Sonix, and Intel 32. In the simulated PLC case, our automation program is transformed to the Intel 32 bytecode. So our first attempt is to break just after the compile step, then we can patch the bytecode with our own shell code, then we can let Control Expert deploy our program in the simulated PLC and see what's happened. And you can see on the right of this slide that uh, we executed our malicious uh, calculator in the context of the simulated PLC process. That means that, that there is no sandboxes mechanisms on the simulated PLC. So great, now we've got uh, our remote, uh, remote code execution on the simulated PLC and on the engineering station. Um, in fact, not really, we face two other problems. The first problem is that in real life, um, simulated PLC is start on demand when the software developer wants to test his automation program. So we have a nightly probability that the, the legitimate user is still connect when we start our attack. In addition, the simulated PLC accepts just one connection at a time. So we must, f we must find a way to hijack the legitimate connection to inject our own payload. The protocol used to deploy automation program is called UMAS. And UMAS is a very, very old proprietary protocol designed by Schneider Electric. And as it's, very, very old, as it's a very, very old protocol, uh, it doesn't have some security features like ciphering or authentication. Uh, also, there is no correlation between the TCP session and the UMAS session. That means uh, this protocol is vulnerable to a man-on-the-side attack. So by doing some network captures and some reverse engineering in Control Expert software, we found that the UMAS session ID is stored in one byte only. So it's easy to brute force it. So now we are able to hijack the legitimate UMAS connection and connect to the simulated PLC. So great. But we face to another problem. Um, by default, Control Expert advises users to start the simulated pro, uh, PLC with a protect automation project inside. So if you don't know the password of the protected project inside the simulated PLC, you cannot, you cannot access to the simulated PLC. So by doing some network captures during the authentication process against the simulated PLC, we see something very, very strange. Uh, in fact, there is no network traffic when the user validates the password. So that means that the, the validation uh, of, the, of the authentication is done on the client side. So an hacker 
to authenticate uh, against the simulated PLC, just have to send the right frame with the right code function, which means authentication is successful and it can gain access. So by going deeper, we found another vulnerabilities in this password protection. Uh, I think uh, this feature was ori originally designed to protect intellectual properties of the automation project. So normally, in case of a malicious person get access to the project automation file, uh, he cannot open it without knowing the password related. But by doing some reverse engineering in Control Expert, we identified the function in charge of doing the authentication. And this function is quite simple. Uh, and if we patch it to always return succeed, then we are able to open all the protected projects without knowing they are password related. That means that there is no cryptographic correlation between the password you provide and the automation project data. So that is very, very bad. So now we will see a little demo chaining these three vulnerabilities. Uh, first, I will patch the compilation process using a debugger to inject my malicious payload. Then I will bypass the authentication process by patching the related function. Then I will hijack the UMass connection to disconnect the legitimate user. And finally, I will execute my malicious payload on the remote PLC, uh, on the remote simulated PLC of the target. And please note that uh, all of this action I will perform uh, to do the attack was, using, was by using a debugger. But I'm using it because I'm, I am a bit lazy. But the attack can, can also be done by designing a standalone program. So let's see and enjoy. Okay, thanks to my workmate Flavian, we have access to this relevant target. And it will be great to have full access on such a station to make what you want on. So we are looking to a privileged escalation. If you have to deal with NIDER environments, you will probably come across with EcoStructures Control Expert Software, also known as Unity Pro. What is pretty interesting from an attacker point of view is the large attack surface that will be offered to us. And after looking at what components seems relevant to me, I chose the Modbus server components. And in fact, it paid off because it took me around two hours to find these vulnerabilities. That shows us how it's important to make a state of play before diving right now into a random binary. Anyway, why did I choose this, this component? The first reason is that it's a, com a services running with system write. The second reason is that the services deal with a shared memory, which is also accessible for, from any users on the station with full write on. And when you encounter such a planetary alignment, you are very likely to find vulnerability. However, it's not straightforward to exploit because you have to properly abuse the shared memory by locating all relevant offsets to reach the bug. Then you have also to find a way to control data to overwrite the file with exactly what you want. And finally, in our case, you have also to bypass one restriction related to the length of the file name. Um, it's easily 
to bypass by using NTFS junction. So here is the basic architecture of Modbus communication. On the left side, you can see a user application running with standard user write. This application is intended to configure the serial channel in order to communicate with a PLC. All parameters set from this application are written it into a shared memory. Later, the Modbus server component, that is the services running with system rights, opens the shared memory and uses all the parameters previously set to really configure the serial channel. Now, imagine if a um, malicious program opens this shared memory and replaces the COM1 string by any file on the system, then the services running with system rights open this file. So the next step to get local privilege escalation will be to find a way to write exactly what you want on. And what I notice, you can use the TCP channel here to write data, to send data to the services. And in fact, the services acts as a forwarder by sending all received data to the PLC throughout the serial channel. And at the moment, you have an arbitrary file write leading to a privileged escalation. So now it's cool. We have full access on this relevant target and we would like to interact with PLC by looking for intrinsic or hidden functions. So our objective is to communicate with PLC to inject new payload by using the most reliable approach, of course, without user interaction. So why not rely on how a PLC development project already works? For example, by first starting a project, then by launching, analyze and build command to compile or to build a new, a new program. And finally, by controlling PLC, thanks to useful commands as start, stop, or download command. So from an attacker point of view, we would like to reproduce this behavior by first studying how the software works and then relying on our finding to make exactly what you want. So in her case, I would like to thank DCOM technology with this reusable component that is our attack. So here is a case study based on DCOM. We will see step by step how to get capabilities in order to manage a project and in order to, um, to interact with the PLC without user interaction. I tell you right now the control expert component owns exactly what you want but unfortunately, you can access this component right now thanks to a malicious program. You have to deal with another component at the middle here um, that acts as a broker to access advanced functionalities. So the first thing you have to do is to instantiate this component. And you can realize that by uh, thanks to a PowerShell by calling the create instance method with the right class ID. This class ID is the class ID to instantiate bro the broker component. And when you call the create instance method, you can see the PS broker process created. So now the next step is to find a way to retrieve an I application interface. And you can do that by calling either a new application method or an, op an open application method. So now we would like to know what we can do with this I application object. So after opening an, an existing application, but you can also create a new application to retrieve this I application interface. If you look at all the members, you can see all methods require an I project interface. So you have first to find a way to retrieve this I project interface. And if you look at the last one, you can see 
the project property which return exactly this interface. So now we would like to know what we can do with this iProject interface. And after calling the project property with the true value, you can see exactly what we expected a couple of slides, comments such as analyze, build, and finally the transfer our PC to PLC, allowing us to transfer a new program to a PLC. So at the moment, we have all we need to manage a new project and to send a new payload to the PLC without user interaction. So why, what else? Why not become the master of the world um, or maybe just the master of ICS world? Let's be humble. So now I let Flavian speak about how to design and execute PLC and construct code. Okay, so now we are on the engineering station and we are able to communicate with the physical PLC. So let's see what funny things we can do. In the legitimate way to run an automation program on a physical PLC, you must follow the same steps that I described before, which are you design your program, you start a complete task for the related PLC, uh, you deploy it on the physical PLC, and finally you run it. So I took the same methodology than the simulated PLC attack, which was to hook the compilation process in order to inject my own payload. So in this case, uh, the architecture of the PLC, of the physical PLC is ARM, so we have to generate an ARM payload. And as for the simulated PLC attack, there is no sandboxes mechanisms, which is great for us. Um, so the first thing that I made is a program that allow me to dump the whole PLC memory and then I can identify that the operating system is the XWorks. Then I reverse it a little bit to locate some interesting functions like the allocation functions and the network functions. Um, also, with all this information in my hands, I can design complex payloads. So I am finally, I am able to extend PLC functionalities that normally you cannot do if you follow the legitimate way. And to make easier the design of such a payload, I made a framework that allowed me to, de to design my automation program in C language. Um, I designed, for, for example, a uh, download execute program that allowed me to completely change the running automation program in the PLC without doing the stop and stop step, which is normally impossible to do. Um, I also can transform the PLC to a network scanner or a proxy forwarder. And so by using this functionality, uh, we can imagine that uh, an attacker can relay his attack in the PLC internal networks to, uh, for example, attack another station. Um, also, I think it's a good place to hide, to hide the backdoor access because at this time, I think it's more difficult to find an inode malware in the PLC memory than a malware in a classical computer. So now we will see another demo showing this attack. So at first I will inject my download execute program in the PLC. Then the PLC will download a chaser light program and execute it on the fly. And finally, the PLC will download a network scanner program and also execute it on the fly. So enjoy.
Okay, so we see that an ICS system is composed of many parts, and uh, we found, for example, many Windows uh, appliances and many embedded systems in it. Um, so the, the attack surface is very huge. So please, at least, follow the best practice like disconnecting the engineering station uh, when it's not used, or make some uh, network segmentation and add some security appliance like uh, firewall or IDS uh, and so on. Um, we see also that ACI's manufacturers start starting to implementing uh, security mechanisms, but uh, they fall into the same mistake that we are already done um, in the early 19th years. Um, for example, uh, when they let the client to doing the authentication process. Uh, also, we found some vulnerabilities like the unconstrained code execution, which needs, needs uh, some in-depth correction. Uh, we see that a PLC is more than just a basic electronic unit. It is based on the real operating systems, and an attacker can use it to do some complex tasks. Um, finally, it's important to mention that all of these works are focused on Schneider Electric products because we have some in our lab, but we think that the most of these uh, vulnerabilities can be easily adapted to other ICS manufacturer solutions. Uh, we also would like to thank Schneider Electric that uh, allow us to present our work, so thank you Schneider. Um, and that's, that's all, we finished our presentation, so thank you for listening to us, and if you have some questions, We'll be glad to try to answer them. So thank you. Bye. Thank you for your presentation. We have time for one or two questions. Uh, Firstly, you recommend using a firewall, but is that possible on the protocol from the Schneider products? Um, uh, <laughs> in, uh, yes, we recommend to use the firewall, but also other devices like... Uh, uh, sorry, your... Uh, yeah. It's better? Yep, perfect. Okay, so um, yes, we recommend to use a firewall, but also um, some of our security devices like uh, an IDS, uh, or also do some network segmentation. Um, because uh, as, as we said, uh, an ACI system uh, is quite uh, simply uh, hackable. So yes, you must do everything uh, everything you can do to, to protect the, the success. Thank you. Mm. You're welcome. There is a question. Do you have an idea of the impact of such vulnerabilities? Um, uh, yes, <laughs> it could be very, very bad. Um, uh, as we demonstrate, we can uh, we can change on the fly uh, the automation program. So, uh, if the, the PLC is, is control uh, some sensitive installation, we can very do very bad things, and and also uh, we can use these vulnerabilities to 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 hide the backdoor and to do uh, network stuff. Uh, so we can give the possibility to uh, to an attacker to have. A, uh, to, to have an access uh, to, to the network of the, of, of, of the, tar of the, the target. So, so yes, we can do bad things uh, to, uh, to, to compromise the, phys the, the physical uh, automation process and also to compromise uh, the IT. And do you have an idea of how much vulnerable devices exist in the wild? <laughs> uh, uh, it's difficult to say, to say but uh, I think uh, there, there is a lot. Um, uh, in fact, um, we, we do additional works that, uh, that, we, that we present in this, uh, in this uh, presentation. And uh, we found that uh, most of these vulnerabilities are also present in uh, uh, other manufacturers. Uh, 
but we can we cannot um, tell you more about uh, the, the manufacturer's names or the device name because uh, we are in a disclosure process. And we've got one last question. How much time did it, how, how much time did it take you to discover and exploit? Uh, the, the vulnerability was uh, easy to find. Uh, the, the real difficulty is to exploit them. Uh, because we don't have uh, any debugger, for example, in a, in a PLC devices or stuff like that. So yes, um, I, I will say uh, about two months. Thank you very much. You're welcome.